Hello. Hello. Can you, can you, good evening. Can you hear me? Yeah. Can you see me? What? Can you see me? Me yes. pueden ver en el video. No. Mm, es que así parece, como que no salgo. No, teacher. Vamos a ver. Solo inglés corporativo. Pero por algún motivo no salgo yo, pero no sé por qué. Ah, ya sé por qué. <ríe> Permítanme. Ahora sí. <ríe> Hi, how are you? Everything okay? Let's begin. Okay, um, everybody, I'm going to share the screen with you and uh, that's it. Let's begin. So welcome once again, it's Inglés Intermedio Modulo 3 and that's me, Ivan Doñan, at your service. It's Intermediate 3, Session 9 and today is October 24th, 2022. So we have... Uh, with us today, Rufino Amilcar, Luis Enriquez, Luis Alonso Urias, Jenny Sanchez, and Natalie Alejandra. That's it, just uh, five people right now. Hmm, okay. Bueno, esperemos que los demás se nos vayan incorporando, verdad? Pronto. We're going to begin. Um, entiendo que algunos han tenido problemas para conectarse, verdad? Entonces, Bueno, yo eh, recientemente he dejado unas instrucciones. Claro, los que estamos acá ahorita, pues estamos porque no tenemos ese problema. Pero tal vez algunos que no hayan podido conectarse a esta reunión y puedan ver el video posteriormente, pues ese mensaje también es para ellos. Eh, he dejado en el grupo de WhatsApp unas instrucciones sobre cómo pueden actualizar la, eh, la aplicación de Zoom fácilmente. Además de otras aplicaciones que también ahí aparecen. Y eso muy probablemente resuelve el problema, ¿verdad? Ok, let's begin. Um, can okay. everybody see the screen that I'm showing? Yes, teacher. Great. All right, let's begin. Well, what are we going to do? We have one final exercise about the relative clauses. Okay, so by the end of this class, participants will learn how to use relative clauses in order to join two ideas into one. So very, very quickly, remember, we use who for people, we use which for things, we don't use which for people. Okay, so that's clear. And we use that for people and things. Okay, if you are not sure, you can use that. Do you know anybody who can play the piano? That's okay. It's very common. Do you know anybody that can play the piano? That's also okay, but it's not so common, but it's good. If you say it like that, it's good. It's okay. So what are we going to do? We're going to work on this exercise. Right or wrong, correct the mistakes. You have the sentences right there, and I need volunteers to tell me what is the problem with each of the of the sentences so you have number one I don't like stories who have unhappy endings that sentence is incorrect but what is the problem can anybody tell me raise your hand please Jenny uh, who mm -hmm. so what is the correct version of the sentence uh, that's Mm -hmm. So, but can you can you uh, read the whole sentence, but in the correct form? I don't like stories who that happy ending. Okay, so I don't like stories uh, that mm -hmm. that have unhappy endings. Okay, I don't like stories that or which okay have unhappy endings. Correct. Thank you, Jenny. What about number two? The sentence reads. What was the name of the person uh, who phoned? Okay, let me check this. Is this sentence right or wrong? Because sometimes they are right, sometimes they are wrong. What do you think? Is there a problem with this sentence? Or is it correct? Uh, 
Amilcar. For me, I, it is correct. I don't see mistake. That's right. Okay, the sentence is correct. There are no mistakes in here. Thank you, Amilcar. Very good. Number three, where is the nearest store who sells bread? Is this sentence, well, is this question correct or do you need to make a change? need to make a change. Mm -hmm. We have to make a change. You have to make a change, says Michelle Escobar. Okay, Michelle, uh, can you tell me what the change is? Where is the nearest store which or that sells bread? That is correct. Where's the nearest store which sells bread or where's the nearest store that sells bread? Very good. Thank you, Michelle. What about number four? Dan said some things about me. They were not true. Is this sentence correct or incorrect? And if it is incorrect, how can you change it? Anybody can participate. Just remember to raise your hand, your digital hand. Press the bottom and then I'll give you a chance to speak. Mm -hmm. Who would like to try? Luis. Okay. Yeah. For me, it's true. For you, it is? I'm sorry? True. True. It is correct. Yes, correct. Yes. Actually, there is a mistake. <laughs> Hay un errorcito ahí. I think that. Okay, Natalie. Uh, is that they some something about me who were not true? Okay, but who is not the right um, relative pronoun here? But thank you. Thank you for your participation. Estamos más cerca de la versión correcta, pero hay algo, algo falló ahí también. Is that, is that verb is, uh, say or is incorrect? No, that is correct. Dan said, it's in ah, past. Okay. Dan said some things about me, they were not true. There's a problem there. Michelle. Dan said some things about me that were not true. Uh huh. Dan said some things about me that or which were not true. Uh, ¿Por qué no se puede ocupar who? Porque son cosas, no personas. Entonces, Dan said some things about me which were not true or that were not true. Okay, thank you, Michelle. Pero está bien, ¿verdad? Incluso si no llegamos a, digamos, la respuesta correcta desde un inicio, entre todos vamos llegando, vamos construyendo hasta que la encontramos y así vamos aprendiendo también. Okay, Luis Enriquez wants to participate. Do you want to uh, do number five? Yeah, the driver who caused the accident was arrested. The driver who caused the accident was arrested. Mm -hmm. Or that the, the driver that caused the accident was arrested. That is correct. Thank you, Luis. Aquí le vemos la frente nomás para arriba. <laughs> okay, ahí está. All right, thank you very much. Number six, who wants to try? Do you know the person that took these photos? Is this right? Is this wrong? And if it's wrong, what corrections will you make? Jenny. Do you know the person who took these photos? Okay, that would be correct. Eso estaría bien, no hay ningún problema. <laughs> but what is the thing about this sentence? It's also correct. When you use that, you can use that or who. No problem. So this sentence is right. And also uh, your version is right. Okay, thank you, Jenny. 
Okay, what about number seven? We live in a world what is changing all the time. Is this right? Is this wrong? And if it's wrong, what will you change? Who wants to participate? Amilcar. Parece que es la, es la, es the seven, right? The seven number seven. Sentences. Yes, number seven. Uh, is, is what is no correct is that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can that, you read? Can you read the whole sentence then, please? We, we live in a world that that is changing all the time. We live in a world that is changing all the time, or we live in a world which is changing all the time. That's correct. Thank you, Amilcar. Very good. Number eight. I like the dress that you are wearing. How about this one? It's correct. correct. Sonia says it's correct. Also, Jenny. Let's see. It's right. That's correct. No problem there. Very good. Thank you, Sonia and Jenny. Number nine. What was the name of the horse what won the race? Is it right? Is it wrong? And if it's wrong, what's the problem? Remember to raise your hand. It's incorrect. Who said that? Ah, Morena. Okay, Morena, <laughs> it's incorrect. Sí. Hoy sí pude entrar. Ah, pero entré por el correo. Ah, vaya, bueno, pero si funciona, funciona. <laughs> pero bajé el, bajé el que usted me dijo, pero no pude entrar. Ah, de veras. Sí. Híjole. Ahí sí ya. <laughs> no tope, sé por tope qué. yo. <laughs> ya no yo sé. también. Ok, uh, Morena. Uh, let's see. Sería, what's, what was the, 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 the name? name of the horse that won the prize? The race, okay. The race. Yeah, what was the name of the horse that or which won the race? The race. Good, very good. Thank you, Morena. And that's the last exercise we will have about relative clauses, okay? That's enough. And now we have to get into section four of the platform, okay? Lesson objective. 4.0. In this class, you will learn vocabulary for describing feelings and gestures. Okay, so some vocabulary for you right now. What is that? Take a look at this. Your turn. Match the adjectives with the pictures. The adjectives in the box are annoyed, bored, confused, disgusted, embarrassed, exhausted, frustrated, impatient, irritated, and nervous. So we're going to go over them one by one. This is number one, number two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Let's see, I need a volunteer. What about the first one? What is that? Raise your hand, remember, raise your hand. Jenny. The number six. Uh, well, what about number one? Digo oh, por el orden okay. de animación, que no lo puedo cambiar ahorita. Uh -huh. Estaba viendo las, las palabras. Uh -huh. Ajá, las palabras de un solo se iba al dibujito. No, pero vamos por okay. número acá. Number okay. one, what is that? Um, exhausted. Exhausted. Mm, not exactly. Oh. Bored? No. Bored, probably not. Michelle, oh. let's see. Michelle, no. let's see what Michelle says. Embarrassed. Embarrassed. Let's see. It is embarrassed. Okay. What is the meaning of embarrassed? By the way. Avergonzado. Mm -hmm. Embarrassed. Okay. That's the meaning of embarrassed. You see the girl right there, right? She's she's red, okay, in embarrassment. She's like, oh my god. Okay. What about number two? Who wants to try? Raise your hand, please. Jenny. Ahora sí. Nervous. Nervous. Yes. No. That's right. Okay. Yes, 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 yes. That's right. Okay. She's nervous. Okay. She's nervous. That's right. 
good. Now, um, be careful about the pronunciation uh, because some people say nervous, but it's not nervous. The pronunciation is nervous. Okay, so nervous. Olivia wants nervous. to participate. Okay, Olivia, what about number three? Confused. Confused. confused yeah that's right confused. this person is mm -hmm. confused yeah. okay very good that's great thank you olivia number four what's number exhausted. four morena did you did you say the answer exhausted exhausted that's right okay the word is exhausted very good when a person is super tired that person is exhausted. Very good. What about number five? Who wants to try? Raise your hand. Remember, raise your hand. Disgusted. Disgusted, says Sonia. Mm, thank you, Sonia, but no, it's not disgusted. But thank you for your participation. Jenny wants to try again. Annoyed. Annoyed. Yes, that's the one. Annoyed. It's like molesto. Right? Like this guy right here. He's annoyed. Okay, that's it. Annoyed. Very good. Then what do we have in number six? Disgusted. Disgusted. Mm, disgusted. Thank you, yeah. but no, it's not disgusted. No. No, not really. Frust Olivia? Frustrated. Frustrated. Mm, thank you, but no, it's not frustrated. Michelle? Irritated. Irritated. Irritated, says Morena. Okay. And Michelle, Michelle, you were going to say something? Yes. Uh Irritated. Irritated. So yeah, mm -hmm. Michelle and Morena, you are right. Okay, the word is irritated. Okay, which is, you know, beyond annoyed. It's like angrier in this case. Irritated. Okay, this person is irritated. Good. What about number seven? What's that? It's when a person feels like, Ugh! right? What is that, Michelle? Disgusted. Disgusted. Okay, that's the meaning of it. Disgusted. Mm -hmm. Asqueado. Okay, that's the meaning of disgusted. Good. Thank you, uh, Michelle. What about number eight? Look at that man. Alejandra. Fr frustrated. Frustrated. That is correct. Thank you, Alejandra. Yeah, frustrated. That's the word. Look at this man. He's frustrated. Olivia, what about number nine? Impatient. Okay. Uh, pronunciation right there. Impatient. Impatient. Mm -hmm. Impatient. You see this man, right? He's impatient. Very good. And finally, uh, thank you, Olivia. And finally, what about the cat right there? Only one option left. Boring. Boring. Bored. Okay. Bored. That's it. You see, the poor cat is bored. Okay. So um, I'm going to read the words for you to uh, repeat in your house. You don't need to activate the microphone. It's not necessary. Just practice in your house. Okay. So repeat after me. Number one, embarrassed. 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 Okay. Embarrassed. Number two, nervous. N nervous. Mm -hmm. Nervous. Nervous. Number three, confused. Confused. Number four, exhausted. Exhausted. Number five, annoyed. Annoyed. Number six, irritated irritated number seven disgusted disgusted number eight frustrated
frustrated. Number nine, impatient. Impatient. And number 10, bored. Bored. Okay. So those are some adjectives that we need to study and learn. Okay, so everybody, please practice them in your house. Remember, they are part of uh, section 4.1, okay, in the platform. There's a video, so please watch the video. I don't, well, I don't remember if there's a video. I think it's just, um, just an exercise, but you can do the exercise, please, now that you have the vocabulary. And what is next? Take a look. Match the people with the sentences, okay? Now, it's not just adjectives, it's actions, too. So, you see this man right here. Well, the, the sentences are, she's biting her nails, she's rolling her eyes, he's scratching his head, he's tapping his foot, she's trailing her hair, and she's wrinkling her nose. So, what about this one right here? What is that? Or which number is that? Number three. Number three, says Michelle. Okay. And someone else participated right there. Luis also wanted to participate. Do you agree, Luis? Yes. yes. <laughs> I can see you. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's number three. He's scratching his head. He's scratching his head. Okay, so when someone scratches his or her head, that means that person is probably confused. Maybe the person doesn't understand what's going on, okay? What about this one here, this little girl? What's she doing? Luis. Number five. Number five, she's twirling her she's hair. Twirling her hair. That's right. Okay. What is that? It's mostly when girls play with her hair a little bit. Okay. She's twirling her hair. Okay. Good. Thank you, Luis. What about this one right here? What about this man? What can you say about him? He's tapping his foot. He's tapping his foot. Okay. Yeah, that's right. He's tapping his foot. He's He's impatient, okay? So he's tapping his foot. Good, you can see it here, right? He's tapping his foot. What about this lady right here? Thank you, Michelle. What about this lady right here? What can you say? Jenny? Number six. Number six, she's wrinkling her nose. Yeah, when you do this. Okay, correct. Okay, she's wrinkling her nose. Good. Thank you, Jenny. What about this one right here? What is that? Number two. Okay, number two, number uh, two. says Jenny and Luis. Do you agree? Yes. Okay. Yes. She's, she's rolling, rolling her eyes. Her okay. eyes. Okay. When you do this. Okay, you roll your eyes. That's it. <laughs> and the last one, obviously, is number one. She's biting her nails. Okay, she's probably nervous right there. So there's some vocabulary for you. There's also an exercise that you can find in the platform. It's basically the same thing. So now that you have the vocabulary on the actions and the adjectives, you can do this very quickly and very easily. Okay, so do that in your house, please, everybody. And now we have to move on to the next section for this class. Point four, sorry, 4.2, lesson objective. In this class, you will listen, practice, and learn about body language using models and adverbs. You'll see. There is a conversation, right? Uh, you'll find it in the video in section 4.3. Have you met Raj? So let's see, I need two volunteers, one boy and one girl to help me read this conversation. Who wants to try? Jenny, okay, you're Emily. And uh, I think uh, Luis, okay, you'll be Ron. Okay, Griselda, you will help me with the next one, please. Okay, no, 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 actually you can do it. Nada más que le tocaría el papel de Peter. 
Bueno, vamos. Griselda, please. You will read Peter's part. So, let's see. Luis, you'll be Ron. Jenny, okay. you'll be Emily. And Griselda, you'll be Peter. Please. Let's begin. Okay. Have you met Raj, the student from India? No, I haven't. Well, he seems really nice, but there is one thing I noticed. He moved his head from side to side when you talk to him, you know, like this? Maybe it means he doesn't understand you. No, I don't think so. Or it could mean he doesn't agree with you. Actually, people from India sometimes move their heels from side to side when they agree with you. Oh, so that's what it means. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to read the conversation. I don't have the track for it, so I have to read it. Uh, thank you, Jenny, Luis, and Griselda for this. So Ron says, have you met Raj, the student from India? Emily says, no, I haven't. Ron says, well, he seems nice, but there is one thing I noticed. He moves his head from side to side when you talk to him, you know, like this. Emily says, maybe it means he doesn't understand you. And Ron says, no, I don't think so. Emily says, or it could mean he doesn't agree with you. And then Peter, who was listening to the conversation says, actually, de hecho, ¿verdad? O en realidad, actually, people from India sometimes move their heads from side to side when they agree with you. And Ron says, oh, so that's what it means. Before we continue, do you have any questions about the vocabulary or the expressions from the conversation? No questions? No? Okay, then. <laughs> All right, so we'll continue then. Take a look. Uh, that's an objective. Let's take a look at this. Um, this is in the video that you'll find in section 4.5, okay? Models of possibility. There is a slight possibility and the strong possibility. And there are models. It might or may mean, it could mean, it must mean. And there are the adverse. Maybe, perhaps it means, it possibly means, it probably means, it definitely means. You will find this in the video, but as usual, there is a bit more information that I have for you right here. We're going to study the models one by one. And we're going to begin with may and might for possibility. Take a look, there's this conversation. He says, where is Ben? This other man says, he may be in his office. And the other guy says, ask Kate, she might know. We use may or might to say that something is possible. We are not sure. We only express that it is possible, all right? So when he says, where is Ben? And this man says, he may be in his office. This man is not sure. He's only expressing a possibility. Maybe he is in the office, maybe, but he doesn't know. And the other guy says, ask Kate, she might know. Kate maybe knows where Ben is. Maybe she knows. But the only way to know is, or the only way to find out is, you know, to go and ask Kate. That's the only thing you can do. So again, you use may or might to say that something is possible. We use them when we are not sure about something. Now, what's the structure? Again, I'll say it one more time. We use may or might to say that something is possible. There are some examples. It may be true. 
It might be true. She might know. She may know. Now, what is the difference between may and might? Son muy parecidos. Might es un poquitito menos probable, pero son casi equiparables en el nivel de posibilidad. ¿Ok? Así como usted puede decir, it may be true, también puede decir, it might be true, y casi, casi que es igual. Lo dice para decir que no, o para expresar, perdón, que no está seguro o segura, ¿verdad? The negative forms are may not and might not. You have to be very careful here. Very, very careful. Why is that? Because may and might are auxiliary verbs. They are modal verbs. Este tipo de verbo se le conoce como modal auxiliaries. Ya son auxiliares, por lo tanto, no necesitan otro auxiliar. A este tipo de verbos usted no le va a poner jamás. El, digamos, como auxiliar, no va a ocupar ni el do ni el das, ni va a ocupar el did. Porque esos son auxiliares. Y de por sí, los modos que estamos estudiando también son auxiliares. Así que no se ponen dos juntos. Tiene su propia forma negativa cada uno. Y es bien sencilla. Solo le pone not y ya estuvo. ¿Ok? Negativo. It may not be true. That means perhaps it isn't true. She might not know. Perhaps she doesn't know. Perhaps means maybe. Now, what is the cool thing about the models? It's very nice. Take a look. Ya les había mencionado que los models tienen algo bien agradable. Uy, permítanme que perdí la presentación. Ahí está. Okay. We have some rules about models. Models. Rule number one. Ay. Well, give me a second. Ah, it's in English. That's why. Okay. Okay. Rule number one. Uh, always use a verb in base form after a model. Okay, that's the first rule. Give me a second. So always use a verb in base form after a model. So you say, she might, this is the model, she might know. This is correct. But if you say, she might knows, that will be incorrect. Okay? If you say, she might knew, okay, that will also be incorrect. Same thing will happen if you say, she might uh, knowing, okay? That would also be incorrect. So the only correct form is a verb in base form. Esa es una de las reglas. Regla número uno, might y mate son models. Y después de un model, usted solamente puede utilizar un verbo en forma base. Y nada más. Nunca un verbo como tercera persona singular de present simple. Nunca un verbo en pasado. Nunca un verbo en ing. Y tampoco un verbo to infinitive. Por ejemplo, she might to know. Okay. That is also incorrect. Okay. That's the first rule. Rule number two of models. Models don't have a different form for the subjects, he, she, or it. Okay, esa es la otra regla. No tienen una forma diferente para los sujetos he, she, or it. Se ocupa el mismo en todos los casos. 
¿Ok? Así que si yo digo, I may, uh, for example, let me see, I might go to the party. Ok, that's good. You say, I might. He might go to the party. Yes, igual. Ok, might go. I might go, she might go. There is not, or there isn't, I'm sorry, a special form for the subjects he, she, or it. Así que solo ahí nos quitamos una preocupación de encima, ¿verdad? He, she, it no tienen ninguna forma especial cuando estamos ocupando modos. Es igual para todos, es parejo, digámoslo así. Okay, let's continue. You can see it here. If the subject is I, you, he, she, it, we, or they, no difference. You use may or might, and after that, you use not if it's negative. If it's affirmative, don't use it. And then you need the verb in base form. For example, it may be true. He may be in his office etc. Right? So you have to use a verb in base form. You say, she might know. Okay? Uh, he may want, etc. That's how it is. So what are we going to do right here? Your turn. Complete the sentences with the phrases from the box. And the phrases are, maybe Tom's. Puede que sea de Tom, okay? Maybe Tom's. Might be in her room. Might be Brazilian. Might have one. Might know. So what about the first one? Do you know where Helen is? And then you say, I'm not sure. She? Volunteer, please. Who wants to try? Michelle and then Alejandra. Do you she know where? She might be uh -huh. in her room. She might be in her room. That is correct. Okay, very good. Do you know where Helen is? I'm not sure. She might be in her room. Now, I have a question. The person who answered, o sea, no me refiero a Michelle, sino a la persona en la conversación. The person who answered, does this person know for sure where Helen is? Is this person sure about that? What do you think? ¿Será que esta persona que contestó estaba segura acerca de dónde estaba Helen? No. No. No, she was no. not sure. When she said she might be in her room, she is so, uh, this person is expressing a possibility only. Only that. Maybe she is there. Tal vez. Okay. Maybe. Very good. Alejandra, number two. Is there a bookstore near here? I'm not sure, but ask Anna, she might know. She might know. Maybe Anna knows. Maybe. Okay. Thank you, Alejandra. Luis, number three. Where are those people from? They might be Brazilian. Okay. It's, I don't know. They might be Brazilian. They look Brazilian, so they might be Brazilian. Uh-huh. <laughs> Levantó la primera parte, pero ahí vamos. Thank you, Liz. Okay. okay, very good. So, uh, where are those people from? And you say, I don't know, but they look Brazilian, so they might be Brazilian. Maybe. Okay. Es como nosotros, vemos de pronto gente con rasgos así asiáticos y decimos, empieza uno a especular, no sabe si son de Japón, si son de China, si son de Corea, si son de Taiwán, si son... Yeah. Es chino, decía. Es chino, dice uno, así por, <risa> por defecto, pero no, hay que tener cuidado porque se ofenden <risa> si uno les dice mal la nacionalidad. Ok. <risa> Amilcar, number four. Whose phone? Whose phone is this? Uh, it, it's not mine. It may be Tom's. It may be Tom's. 
Ok. Mm -hmm. Puede que sea de Tom. Thank you, Amilcar. Very good. And number five. Do you know anyone who has a key to this door? Volunteer. <laughs> Jenny. Rachel might not may. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Rachel may now, but I'm not sure. Uh, but we have already used that one. Ya ocupamos esa. Ah, sí. Ah, Rachel might have one. I'm, but I'm not sure. Okay, thank you, Jenny. Do you know anyone who has a key to this door? And the person replies, Rachel might have one, but I'm not sure. Very good. So that's how you use might and may. Okay, but this is only the beginning of it. We need to continue. Ahora bien, como todo en el idioma tiene más de un uso, aquí va el siguiente. Might and may. We use may or might to talk about possible actions or events in the future. Mm -hmm. There are some examples. I haven't decided where to go on vacation. I may go to Ireland. That means perhaps, tal vez, perhaps I will go there. I may go to Ireland. Pero todavía no me he decidido. Okay. Take an umbrella with you. It might rain later. Okay. That means maybe or perhaps it will rain later. So we're talking about possible events in the future. We are not sure. Again, we are not sure, but it is possible that these events will happen in the future. So in these cases, we also use may and might. Example number three, the bus isn't always on time, like in El Salvador. We might have to wait a few minutes. That means perhaps we will have to wait. Now, what about the negative form? The negative form is the same that we studied a few minutes ago. The negative forms are may not and might not. You have two examples. Amy may not go out tonight. She isn't feeling well. Second example, there might not be enough time to discuss everything at the meeting. Puede que no haya suficiente tiempo para discutir todo en la reunión. Tipo como en la clase, que nos quedamos a medio camino cada clase y después tenemos que <laughs> recogemos verdad el hilo la siguiente clase. So, you have to be careful right there. Compare, when you say, I am going to buy a car, that's for sure. This is not a possibility. It's an intention that you have. It's a plan that you have. Maybe you have the money and you say, I'm going to buy a car. You are sure about this. But if you say, I may buy a car or I might buy a car, that is possible. I forgot the red color here. Give me a moment. Okay, we see. When you say I may buy a car or I might buy a car, we are talking about a possibility only. We are not sure. Now, usually you can use may or might. So you can say, I might go to Ireland or I may go to Ireland. Another example, Jane might be able to help you or Jane may be able to help you. Puede que Jane eh, pueda ayudarte, ¿verdad? But you have to be careful here. Mucho cuidado con esto. But we use might and not may when the situation is not real. 
¿Cuándo vamos a ocupar might en lugar de may? Cuando estemos hablando de una situación hipotética. ¿Ok? Por ejemplo, if they paid me better, I might work harder. Si me pagaran mejor, dice, dice el ejemplo, ¿verdad? Trabajaría más duro. ¿Ok? If they paid me better, I might work harder. En este caso no podemos ocupar may. ¿Por qué? Porque no es una situación posible. Es una situación hipotética. Es imaginaria. La realidad es que a esta persona no le pagan muy bien y por lo tanto no se esfuerza mucho. Entonces dice, si me pagaran mejor, ¿verdad? podría trabajar más ¿verdad? o podría meterle más ganas a esto. Pero como no. So, If they paid me better, I might work harder. Para este tipo de situaciones que son hipotéticas en su naturaleza, solo podemos ocupar might, pero no may. Okay? Be very careful right there. So this situation, if they paid me better, is not real. They do not pay me well, so I am not going to work harder. Un paréntesis ahí, ¿verdad? Solo para no cometer un error en una situación hipotética. Your turn. Take a look. Choose the correct alternative to complete the sentences. Where are you going for your vacation? I need a volunteer. Who wants to try? You need to select the correct option. Okay, Alejandra Magaña, let's do this. I think it's, I might go. Mm -hmm. Can you read the whole sentence, please? Uh, where are you going for your vacation? I haven't decided yet. I might go to Ireland. I might go to Ireland. That's right. I might go to Ireland because it's maybe uh, this person will go, maybe not. Thank you, Alejandra. Very good. Number two, who wants to try? Natalie and then Michelle. So Natalie, have you decided what kind of car you want to buy? Yes, I'm going to get a sports car. Okay, Natalie says, yes, I'm going to get a sports car. This is not a possibility. She is sure about it. So she says, I'm going to get a sports car. Thank you, Natalie. Michelle wanted to participate. Number three. When is Tom coming to see us? I'm not sure he might come on Sunday. That's right. I'm not sure he might come on Sunday. We say he might come because this person is not sure about it. Thank you, Michelle. What about number four? Who wants to try? Nobody wants to try. Okay, Sonia. Okay, Sonia. Um, number four. Number four. Where are you going to put that picture? I don't know yet. I might hang in the bedroom. I might hang it in the bedroom. That's right. You say, I don't know yet. I might hang it in the bed. Very good. Thank you, Sonia. All right, number five. Who wants to try number five? Raise your hand, please. What time is it? 8.49, wow. Paola, hello, Paola. Paola, I think this is the first time I see your face. <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice to meet you. Hi. Okay, <laughs> hi. So um, what's Amanda going to do when she leaves school? Does she know yet? Yes, she has the signs. She is going to university. Correct. Thank you, Paola. Uh, th this person said, yes, she has decided. She is sure about it. So she is going to university. Thank you very much. Number six. Who wants to give it a try? Number six, please. 
Ajá. <laughs> okay, Michelle. Nothing. Do you have plans for the weekend? Nothing fixed. I might I go away. Go away. Nothing fixed. I might go away. I okay. Go. Thank you, Michelle. When the other person said nothing fixed, that means nothing for sure. No plans in reality. Okay. So I might go away or I might stay home. Hmm. So that is correct. Thank you, Michelle. And thank you everybody for your participation. That was very good. Very, very good. For the next exercise, your turn. Okay. Complete the sentences. Let's see. Yeah, we have two more exercises that we are going to complete now. Complete the sentences using might and a verb from the box. And in the box, you have the verbs here, need, rain, slip, spill, and wake. So, um, what about number one? Always, okay, Michelle, then Natalie, okay. Take an umbrella with you when you go out. It might rain later. It, um, it might rain later. Yes, that is correct. Thank you, Michelle. Natalie, do you have the second one? Don't make too much, too much noise. You, you might wake the baby. Mm-hmm. You might wake the baby. Podría despertar al bebé. You might wake the baby. That is good. Thank you, Natalie. Very good. Number three. Who wants to participate? Alejandra and then Luis. So Alejandra, number three, and Luis, number four. So Alejandra, please. Be careful with your coffee. You might spill it. You might spill it. Okay. Lo va a botar. Okay, you might spill it. Good. Thank you, Alejandra. Luis Enriquez, what about number four? Don't forget your phone. You might hear it. You might hear it. Mm, I will try a different verb. Mm, uh, yes, you might need it. You might need it. Uh huh. Correct. Thank you, Luis. Yes, yeah, thank you. Okay. Uh, don't forget your phone. You might need it. Good. Um, Amilcar, what about number five? Uh, it's, it's better if we don't talk so loudly. Somebody might hear, hear us. Uh -huh, that's right. It's better if we don't talk so loudly. Somebody might hear us. So psh, 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 keep it quiet. So yeah, somebody might hear us. Thank you, Amilcar. Very good. And number six. Who wants to try number six? We only have one more option, so should be easy. Alejandra. Be careful. This food bar is icy. You might sleep. Yeah. Sleep. Thank you. That's correct, Alejandra. Be careful. This food path is icy. You might slip. Este sendero está cubierto de nieve, de, de hielo, perdón. You might slip. Te podría resbalar. So, again, be careful. This, this footpath, footpath, I'm sorry, is icy. You might slip. That's right. Don't confuse the verb slip and sleep. Okay, two different things and two different pronunciations right there. This slip, which is deslizarse, and there's sleep, which is dormir. The difference is the sound. In the first one, you use the sound it, 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 slip, slip. It's a short sound, slip, slip. And in the second one, you have a longer and stronger sound. E, E, sleep, sleep. So the difference is slip, slip, and sleep, sleep. Two different verbs right there. Similar in pronunciation, but different in meaning. So um, 
this is probably the last exercise today. And for this, okay, we're going to, this is the last one. Okay, we're going to work in breakout rooms for the last exercise. Um, you'll be working in pairs for this activity. In pairs, probably, let's see, we have 14 people. Yeah, you'll be working in pairs. Probablemente por el tiempo no voy a alcanzar a visitar todas las salas, tal vez unas pocas, pero trabajemos todos juntos y al final vamos a revisar. Ya quedan pocos minutos. Ok, room one, José Vega en Olivia Osorio. Room two, Alejandra Magaña en Rufino Amilcar. Room three, Griselda de Mejía en Luis Alonso Urias. Room four, Michelle Escobar en Sonia Guadalupe. Room five, Luis Enríquez en Morena Medina. Room six, Natalie Alejandra en Jenny Sánchez. Room seven, Gladys Campos en Paola María. I'm going to form the groups, uh, check the, the WhatsApp conversation because I'm going to uh, share the picture right there. And let's do the exercise. But before that, let me explain. Casi me olvidé explicarlo. So complete the sentences using might and the verb. Uh, sorry, I think I didn't change the instruction. Bueno. No le hagan caso a la instrucción, se me olvidó cambiarla, lo siento. Lisa is not feeling well. I am not sure that she will go to the party. So, what do you say? Lisa might not go to the party. ¿Qué vamos a hacer acá? Todas son negativas. Vamos a ver acá. Use might plus not. Uh, Rewrite the sentences. Bueno, eso está mejor. So you have to use might plus not all the time. Okay, all of them are negative. So again, Lisa is not feeling very well. I am not sure that she will go to the party. So Lisa might not go to the party. I'm going to open the breakout rooms now. Please work on them. Again, I am just going to visit a few of them and then we're coming back and check the exercises. Let's begin. Everybody, please join the breakout rooms. And then uh, I don't know I will record it or not. I might not. I might not. I might not. Uh, recognize him. Mm -hmm. I might not recognize him. That's right. Yeah. Okay. See you in a few minutes. Or not. I might. I might not. Recognize, not, uh, recognize him. Uh -huh. Yeah. Recognize it. Uh-huh. Recognize. Okay. Let's say the three, the three sentences. We want to go to the to the game, but I don't know if we will be able to get tickets. Mm -hmm. We might not be able 
Uh -huh. we, we, we might not, might not. Uh, we might not be able to get tickets for the game. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to a different room. See you in a few minutes. Mm -hmm. See, we might not. We might not. To get. We might not. Um, cuida, cuidado porque después de might no podemos ocupar un to infinitive. No podemos decir to not. get. We might not. We might not. Get tickets for the game. Sí, podría ser. We might get not ticket. get tickets for the game. Get ticket. Aunque también podría ser. We might not be able to get tickets for the game. Mm -hmm. That would be good. Yeah. I'm going to uh, check on a different room. See you in a few minutes. Okay. okay. Sure. Be able. Be able. Be able to go. To go. To go. Mm -hmm. To the way. Hi, Hi. <laughs> Ajá, ¿en, en por cuál van? Ya terminamos. Ah, es tú. Ok. What about number four? I said I would do the shopping, but it's possible I won't have time. I might not possible to do the shopping. Mm, there is a problem. I might not have time. Have time, ok, to do the shopping. Después de might, hay que utilizar un verbo, pero possible no es un verbo. Oh, uh, so yeah. I might not have time to do the shopping. Okay, I'm going to visit another room and after that, we're going to check answers together. Thank you. Okay. Okay, everybody, because of the time, I'm going to close the breakout rooms now. See you in one minute. Twenty five seconds. Five seconds. Ten seconds. Ten seconds. Okay, everybody, welcome back. Okay, everybody, welcome back. Um, okay, number two, I haven't seen him for a long time. I don't know if he will, if I will recognize him or not. He wants to try. Mm -hmm. Michelle. I might not recognize him. I might not recognize him, correct. Thank you, Michelle. Number three, we want to go to the game, but I don't know if we will be able to get tickets. Mm -hmm. We may. Uh -huh. We may not apple. We to may get ticket. Okay, we may not. 
Falta el verbo ahí. We may not. Able. Able. Ay, no sé cómo se pronuncia. Able. Pero able. antes de able va un verbo. Vamos a ver, Griselda o uh -huh. Natalie. Be. Ajá. Able. We may not be able. Be able to get ticket. For the game. Mm -hmm. oh, uh -huh. We might for not be game. able to get tickets for the game. Okay, good. Number four, Griselda, do you have it? I said I will do the shopping, but it's possible I won't have time. I might not have to time have time to to do the shopping. Correct. I might not have time to do the shopping. Thank you, Griselda. <laughs> And Natalie, number five, I have an invitation to the wedding, but I am not sure that I will be able to go. Um, I might not uh, be able to go. I might not be able to go to the wedding. Okay, that is correct. Thank you, Natalie. Okay, so if you don't have any questions, ya nos pasamos bastante, la disculpa del caso. We're going to stop the class right here. Any questions? Anybody? No, any questions. <laughs> no questions. Okay. Okay, everybody. Thank you. Thank you for your patience also. And I will see you tomorrow. Take I'll good see care. You tomorrow. Good night. Good night, teacher. Good night, teacher.